uh, according to or per executive order 7B, uh, this meeting, virtual meeting will be recorded for compliance as per the state of Connecticut. Uh, what do you think of that, Pete? I didn't have to ask you for it, it's, which is shocking. I think we, uh, got the, we got the gist of it, yeah. Amen. Um, with that being said, let's just get uh, right to our uh, event. I don't think we have anything to vote on today. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Why don't we start right of, uh, with old business, development projects update. Okay, uh, we just had the uh, Borden uh, ribbon cutting, which was very uh, well attended. Um, Marty Kenny um, indicated that I believe he has 80% of the apartments leased already. Um, so he was uh, very pleased. Uh, he had some great, great things to say about uh, Weathersfield as a community and, and the project itself. So it was a nice event, uh, very well attended and um, a good time was had by all. Uh, the other project that's nearing completion are the apartments at 170 Ridge Road. They're looking to get a certificate of occupancy, I think to have folks move in by October 1st. We're talking with them about having a ribbon cutting in the next couple of weeks here. They still got some things to do up there, but uh, that'll be the next ribbon cutting that we probably have. I believe the Lenoche, uh, Lenoche's Italian Kitchen on Main Street is scheduled to open. Um, they may have already done a soft opening, but I think they're officially looking to open next uh, Monday. So um, please uh, look out for that. Uh, looks, looks like a great addition on Main Street. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission approved a liquor permit uh, for the Heirloom Market at their, uh, one of their previous Planning and Zoning meetings. So they're, they've got plans to add that to their uh, offerings at the Heirloom Market. Um, we've had some interest in the vacant building at 1199 Silas Dean Highway with a prospective buyer. Uh, Joe Sulo is making great progress up at 1773 Berlin Turnpike. That's one of the projects that we provided some facade funding. So if you wanted to drive by and see the progress up there. Uh, also, also met with a group um, a couple weeks ago regarding the um, Masonic building at the corner of Main uh, and Church Street. Um, got a contact from a developer looking at the Jordan Lane nursing home. Uh, unfortunately, it was for a more of an industrial use. Uh, so we uh, uh, really kind of had to direct them uh, another way. But nevertheless, we did get some interest in that. And then I had a meeting a day or two ago with an interested group for 1000 Silas Dean Highway. So we've been, um, we've been, we've been busy with all those things. Um, Peter, kudos to you and the rest of the EDIC and RDA. I know that I couldn't, I was away on the ninth uh, when they did the ribbon cutting for the Borden, but um, there was a point in, in, uh, in when Weathersfield was not viewed as a, a, a town friendly spot for redevelopment, whether it was earned or not earned. Um, that's what was that what was out there and with um, the interest that we've gotten unsolicited and solicited from outside parties um, it just goes to show that I think the town's on the map with regards to having inertia and moving forward and and being very pro-business um, um, so again kudos you mentioned on uh, for heirloom on the liquor market I, I would assume that they're going to be going for some type of a restaurant um, their breakfast and lunch now. So that's an assumption on my part. I don't know that to be true, but between them and La Noche, I'm wondering um, how things are going with the um, uh, first church and parking because Weathersfield is becoming a little tiny uh, mecca uh, of restaurants and, and business. And um, I, you know, I know we struggle with parking. We've had a parking study done, but I'm wondering, is there an update at all on the parking? Maybe I'll defer to Gary on that. Gary's kind of been on the more on the front lines with First Church than I have. Gary? Yep. Um, I spoke to them last week, uh, and um, they we've sent them an MOU for review. They've made a few minor modifications on it, and then they were going to get back to us on if there was any ask. Uh, they've been very upfront and honest that they just want to be a part of the community and try to support the old Weathersfield community. So. Um, right now, I would argue there is a uh, gentleman slash gentlewoman's agreement between the uh, town and the 
church. However, we're looking to memorialize it with something more um, substantial or significant. But so the MOU has kind of gone back and forth and I'm, I'm hoping within the next 30 days we have something real to sign off on. On a, on a parking related note, um, since you raised that question, uh, you remember we received uh, grant funding to redo some of the intersections and things like that in, in Old Weathersfield. So we are looking um, to piggy piggyback on that grant to see if we can um, add some parking in certain spots. It wouldn't be a huge significant amount of parking, but as we look to improve the intersection, for example, around Hartford and Maine, there's some opportunities there that might result in some uh, additional parking. So uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, on that as those plans go forward. There will be additional public meetings uh, on that, but nevertheless, it might uh, end up also helping to address um, some additional parking in that general area. And question for Gary. Uh, if we use First Church and have an agreement with them, uh, would the town's insurance cover that, uh, accidents in there, or would the churches? That's a great question. Um, and that is kind of part of the discussion. Uh, the back and forth was depends upon if it's an accident or if it's a defect within the material of they just paved their parking lot. So let's say there's a deficiency or a defect and potholes are created and someone drops their car in there that and our opinion is different than if two cars collide because they're just not capable of driving um, or you know, yielding the right of way to each other. So it's it's similar to any parking lot that the town owns um, is is part of that conversation versus whether or not the church owns it. So if you get into an accident out here in the town parking lot, we're not necessarily responsible for your driving. If there is a tree or or a light pole down in the middle of the road and you drive into it, there might be some subrogation. In other words, we might say, well, we should have fixed, you'd have to prove to us that we didn't have enough time, or we'd have to prove we didn't have enough time to fix it or address it. But those are kind of the questions you have to work out through the MOU. I think a sign, a small sign to just say park at your own risk or something, you know, not quite that bold, but something to say this is not town property or something. Yeah, I mean, they would maintain their own liability on their on theirs, but we, we could explain that. Um, that it, uh, although my uh, my experience has always been that they'll find any reason to sue the town because we're deep pockets. Deep pockets, um, yeah. And <clears throat> okay. we have pretty good we have pretty good lawyers on that, but it is a good question. It's something we consider. The other thing is we um, we did Peter, Derek, and I did have a discussion with physical services, kind of on that same vein of um, expanding parking. We obviously have the fire station down on the other end. Um, Derek has Derek Gregor, the engineer, is town engineer is kind of been working on different options and potential ways we could reconfigure or reuse that area, but it's all very preliminary. But we were hoping to maybe go after some funding from the state level to make dreams come true. Um, but again, all preliminary. I think Peter's did a great job last year um, and into this year leading a discussion about parking in Old Weathersfield and what the ability is to increase capacity because the reality is um, as much as we want to increase foot traffic and pedestrian traffic, you need a place to park. Judy, you have a long driveway. We might be able to use your driveway maybe for some parking needs. Good luck. Just go off on a broad street. It's fine. Um, I have a question for Joya. Um, uh, with uh, the success of the board, and I know you're on the commercial side predominantly, but um, with the board at 80%, do you look at that uh, as the, and I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but do you think the Southstein Highway or any of the thoroughfares can handle more residential um, um, business um, with the board net 80% in, in, during COVID? What are your thoughts? My initial thought is, yeah, I think we can do a little bit more in Weathersfield. We don't have the newer, um, apartment condo kind of things that would attract younger people and they're looking to move into a town like Weathersfield. I know there's been a lot of commercial activity recently, so I don't know, it's very positive right now. Okay. 
Thank you, Joya. Um, Pete, is that, are you uh, good with development projects? That's it, unless anyone has any questions. Okay, we'll move, move on to item B, uh, self-storage moratorium. Peter and I uh, met with PNZ on September 1st. Pete, I'll let you take that over. Oh, sure. Uh, the commission did uh, extend the moratorium for another 90 days, which would uh, take us through December 4th of this year. Um, my plan is to um, present the uh, revised regulations to the commission uh, at their first meeting in November. Um, we did get some feedback from the commission uh, a couple weeks back, so I'm doing some research to address uh, some of their questions and concerns, but um, they did extend it and um, we will uh, be scheduling uh, that hearing to make those revisions uh, for the commission. So uh, that's presently where we're at. Great. Um, Pete, I know on our last meeting on the business outreach initiative um, that we were at the mercy of the printers. Um, are, where are we on that? Um, and, you know, do you think from a timing perspective, if we were ready, this is a good time to send stuff out? Or do you think the dust should settle more from a business climate perspective? Um, so first question, first part of the question is, are they ready? Are we, do we have stuff printed or do we they're, have to make any? Yeah, they're waiting, waiting for us to, to make that call. So they are uh, standing by. So I, I think it's as good a time as any things I think have settled out, I think to the extent that they can for the foreseeable future. So I'm, um, it's on my list of things to do in the next uh, couple of weeks. So I'm ready to, ready to pull the trigger and get that, um, get that out the door. We may need some, um, no, I don't think we will. We're going to rely on the on the printer to do the mailing and do the stuffing of the envelopes and all that kind of stuff. So I was going to say we might need to have a stuffing party, but we did get a price um, for the mailing for them to do that. So uh, we won't need that assistance. So I'm uh, I'm ready to to pull the trigger. Uh, I think um, maybe we should just have a marketing a quick marketing meeting. I'll email it out to everybody. Uh, just to make sure everybody's okay with the final uh, wording of everything, but um, we should be uh, ready to go and uh, the money is there available for us to do that. So do you want to, uh, at the end of this meeting, we'll schedule a marketing meeting or do you want to send the piece out and then schedule it at that time? Um, I, I think we, we can do both today and just maybe, uh, maybe as quickly as uh, next week, uh, you know, get a quick, Get a quick uh, committee meeting scheduled. Okay. Great. Um, you know, salute to on, business. On that, I'm yeah, sorry. On that, on that same uh, subject, I think there's a lot more we can do from a shops local a program perspective. You know, it's kind of uh, when we initially started the program, you know, we were having meetings with uh, Silestine Highway merchants, getting other ideas on how to best support the business community. So I think there's a there's a lot more that we could do with the shop's local initiative, but obviously the first thing is to make sure we have all of the right contacts and all that right. kind of thing. But I think uh, this would be the beginning of kind of assessing the whole shop's local initiative, um, what's been good and what's been bad and what we can do a little bit differently going forward in the future. Um, to dovetail off that, uh, we spoke uh, last month about um, possibly um, doing a meeting uh, with the chamber, uh, a Zoom meeting with the chamber and getting some buy-in um, on that. What are your thoughts, Madam Ch uh, Chamber of Commerce person? <laughs> Can't hear you. No, I'm not muted. Oh, there you are. We got you oh, now. Oh, good. We got you Just now. Just a delay. Huh? Can you Just hear a, me? We can yes. hear you now. Okay. Uh, I, I, I didn't have any uh, voice on my last Zoom call either. So you want to get together. Could you just repeat your question? I got a little frazzled on that. <laughs> yeah. Re yeah. Regarding the business outreach, um, yeah. I, we were suggesting a joint special meeting with the chamber via Zoom. 
Um, I'm just trying to get, you know, it could be COVID related or just more of a generic general meeting that we'd like to hear the EDIC and RDA would like to just talk with the business community, maybe even with just what's on their mind. Um, you know, I, this could be past the community, either just after the community outreach piece that we're mailing out or prior to that. What, what were your thoughts? And I just, I feel as though we're glad that we have you here, but I don't really feel like we have a strong enough connection um, or, or are hearing enough from the people on the street, so to speak. I, I hear you on that. And um, I, would, I would actually love that. So what I've been doing the, these past two weeks is almost like retention to the chamber. So reaching out to each individual business personally and going to visit them to try to get, um, you know, boots on the ground as to what they're looking for. Um, so I, I would love to organize a Zoom meeting. I think I mentioned that last time with the town and I'll, and I'll you know, push it out to the chamber members. Um, you know, we're, last night I went and spoke to Martha Heaney at the at river and, uh, you know, getting a connection with her and getting some events scheduled. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, everything is like pushed out till next year, I think. Yeah. But um, I, I think that the businesses right now are uh, treading water for that from that's the feedback I'm getting when I visit with them or talk with them. Um, and I'm trying to get them more connected, you know, with things going with the people in the town. So I would love to organize a Zoom meeting with that. Anytime. You have my cell phone number or my email address? I do. Either, do me a favor and reach out to me and, and we'll coordinate with Pete. Um, but let, let's have a chat offline on that. But it's something that I definitely would like uh, to get involved with. Um, so reach out to me and then we'll reach out to Pete and, and Gary, et cetera. I could use the help. I would love it. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, all right, so salute. Uh, any other questions on business outreach? So item A under new business, salute to business on December 9th, 20, 2020. Um, we chatted last month about um, doing it, not doing it, doing it differently, et cetera. Um, we'd love to hear from everybody on, on their thoughts. Um, Judy Keene, who I believe- I have is a suggestion. A, oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, why don't we take an empty parking lot or the river parking lot and have a drive-in um, salute to business? We could have a vendor who would provide snacks or whatever for every car. Um, they would pay for it um, because everybody pays to come to the meeting anyway, except the recipients, um, and do a drive-in style my thoughts <laughs> great that's a, that's an interesting one thank you for that anybody else have any thoughts um just a comment on that when i met with martha last night she was she was saying about having events in the in her parking lot and you know welcomes any ideas but the vendor for food she wants it to be her food just fyi yeah that makes of sense course. yeah um peter um um, or Mr. Mayor or any, or Gary, is there any legal aspects that we need to take into account on, on, uh, with regards to holding an event, uh, potentially indoors, you know, the way we've traditionally done it? Indoors? So, yes. We, we did talk to the chamber. They're still limited to 25 people. Yep. So clearly that's uh, at this point not not uh, an option uh, that may or may not change with the governor's executive orders, at the, but at this point, um, they're still limited to 25. So that's really not gonna, probably not gonna work. Um, and the most recent executive order is heavy fines and penalties for violating it. So the town is not gonna support or sponsor anything that goes over that number. We, is it not live free or die, Gary? Is that what you're saying? Unfortunately, no. It's a different state. Um, well, I think our infectious disease nurse who is on the call with us would, would probably agree with that. Yeah, um, I saw her shaking her head. Yeah, I think the idea of, um, of, of a drive-through type of event is an interesting one. Um, 
um, you know, if we we're stuck if, at that number of 25, we could do a small intimate something with just the awardees um, as a possibility. Um, so properly social distance um, could be an option as well. You know, and so it wouldn't be a, a public event, but we do have a budget uh, for that. Um, uh, Peter, what is our budget outside of the ticket sales that we have for that? I, I know we've got to dig deep on that, but we do have a budget. I think it's uh, $5,000. So we have a budget of $5,000, not that I'm looking for a way to spend it, especially during these times, but we do have a budget that if we want to do something on a smaller scale, um, um, again, with just the awardees, um, that is a possibility as well. But we probably need to make our decision on that, at least, you know, if, if not today, at least by the next meeting, I would think, um, because there is some legwork on, you know, finding who the attendees are. Uh, Mr. Manager? What's the, uh, I apologize, what's the, when do you usually do this? Is it January? No, it's December 9th. It's December 9th. December 9th, yeah. I was thinking the state of the town. Um, it's probably too cold to do outside with cute little fire pits, huh? But Under you still can only have uh, a certain 50 people, I think, outside. Yeah. 100. Uh -huh. 100 outside? 100. I, I think that the uh, drive in, not drive through, Mark, drive in where cars park, have their, their dinner, you know, and have it be something that uh, River can do, you know, when then we're supporting them too. And um, I just think people will enjoy that. Everybody wants to have their family and their friends there for that event. And how would the, how do you envision the food being served? Would that be a, a communal area? Bring out area? a box lunch. Bring out a box lunch that people have called and paid for ahead of time. They'll give you a number. Put your number in your car. Okay. Do we have to do it on the date we selected? I mean, could we change it to a, a Saturday lunchtime or something so it's daylight, not at night? Um, I know it's a tight time frame, but could we move it to November, for example, early November, just not to get into a snowstorm scenario? Mm. Just a thought. Um, I'm actually planning a virtual event right now for an organization I'm on the board of. And to Judy's point, um, I think when you are honoring people, there's something really nice about seeing them. Like I can all see you right now. Um, I feel more connected to you that maybe a little more than I would be if I was sitting in my car by myself. Could we give some thought to a virtual event? And I know I came in 10 minutes late. So if we already exonate that idea, then let me know. No, you're good. Thanks, Brooke. Any other thoughts? Well, at, the I river, think... they, at the river, they were planning a, uh, you know, a, a drive-in movie theater. If they've got the screen and stuff, maybe you could turn around and have the event and, you know, do a video of them on the screen there so you can see them from the cars and stuff so it could be more personalized. They don't, they don't have the screen or projector as yet bought. Right. FYI. You can rent, it. You can rent yeah. one. You can rent the screen yeah. and the projector. Yeah. Well, within the five thousand dollar budget allotment, too. So. Yeah, that's a that's a um, an interesting twist on it. Um, getting people up on the big screen. Um, okay. Um, we can chat about it now. Obviously, and I don't think we're ready to actually have a fine tune of an idea. But do you think, Peter, we should have a conversation as a group before the next meeting? So at the next meeting, we can kind of formalize something. Um, if we can just, um, I know Denise has been, Denise is with us and, and she's taking copious notes, I'm sure, but maybe we can shoot an email outlining the ideas that have been discussed here, um, and then, um, maybe flesh them out a little bit more. Um, anybody have any idea how much, uh, the, the Judy, you might on the, uh, rental for the, um, the screen and, and whatnot? I I don't know, but there is somebody who lives in Weathersfield, and I can't remember his name, but he owns a company that does that. He does movies for uh, schools, you know, outdoor mm -hmm. movies and things. And there was a, I think it was he that had the event on the green, uh, movies on the green for the start of school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously not this year, but another year. I always thought that was you. I know. 
That was the PTA, PTO. Yeah. The, I think the foundation sponsors, we do, I think we sponsored Judy. We did, we gave yeah. the money for it. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think it was like a thousand dollars and that covered more than just the screen and the, uh, the video part. We've used them at uh, Pine Acres for uh, the kids movie nights. And uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but he is a local Weathersfield gentleman that does it. Yeah. I'm checking with some of my contacts right now. So what you're envisioning, Judy, is people would pull in and as they're awarded, they can come up and we'd have a camera there and the camera would be able to capture them and get them up on the screen. Um, and all of your comments and anybody else that makes comments that night would be up on the screen. Just like you do the, um, the video of, uh, what's, of the calendar. We could actually put that up too. I just think it would be, a, you know, the river may not ever do their drive-in. They're, they're talking about it, but they haven't pulled the trigger. I think it would be a fun event, and you can have as many cars as can fit there. So I, I don't think, Brooke, that people will be sitting alone in their car. I think they're going to be with their family in their car or next to their family or their colleagues at work. I, I think it would be a, a kind of a fun event. Is there a way that uh, people can tune in to a station and hear the audio? Yeah, well? they on their phone. They'd have to. They'd have to do that. Uh, I I assume too. I think on their phone they can pick it up. Okay. Um, if not, there's there's an RF modulator system that you can literally plug into an auxiliary and it, it broadcasts it to uh, to your radio station. You know, eighty nine point seven or whatever. Okay. All right. Cool. Well. Um, um, if we can find out who that gentleman is, um, I know, Mr. Mayor, you were ch checking on that. If we can find out what that is, what the cost would be, mm -hmm. and maybe that sounds to me the, the idea here that's got the most momentum. Obviously, we're open to anything else as well, um, but it's certainly a novel thing. I think Joya's point, though, on doing it during the day versus doing it at night probably makes sense, especially turning it more into a luncheon. So, um, which might be easier for um, uh, the the restaurant to, to fulfill a lunch versus but then you lose, thing. But then unfortunately you lose the capability to broadcast anything onto a screen. At oh, that right, right, right. So we'd have to do it maybe at uh, dusk. At dusk, um, yeah. Yeah, okay, good point. <laughs> which is still at like four o'clock in the afternoon at that I point. Know. Yeah, I hate that. Don't remind me. Thank you. All right. Um, well, that's that's a good idea. So if um, if if we can um, maybe just get an email generated, Pete, to talk about that, um, and and we'll get an idea of what the budget would. I think we need to figure out what the budget is and what the logistics would be, and we would need to talk to uh, Martha um, at uh, at Putnam Park um, as well, or Chris, whomever. Um, so we'll, let's begin to flesh that out. Good ideas, everyone. Thank you. Um, welcome uh, the 21 uh, Town Guide and Calendar. Can't believe it's that time of year again. Peter? So yes, it is that time of year. We're, um, we're getting ready to send out the solicitation for the community photo contest, which is a precursor to the calendar. So um, the wheels are in motion uh, for that. I just wanted to put it on, uh, on our agenda, it's coming up. If there, is, if there are any strong feelings about making any uh, dramatic changes to what we've done in the past, um, I just wanted to discuss that um, so that uh, we can plan uh, accordingly. A couple of years ago, we tried to use the calendar uh, as a business directory as well. Um, that was a lot of work. Um, so if there's some thought about changing anything, I just wanted to make sure uh, we had that conversation and um, we planned uh, accordingly for, for that. So um, as the uh, title indicates, it's a, a town uh, event and meeting calendar as well as uh, a resource for residents about community uh, activities and community organizations. Um, so if there are other elements that you think we should be including, uh, I wanted to 
discuss that uh, with everybody so that we can uh, start going down that road. I ask a question on the photo contest. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Um, okay. Um, I know in the past they've all been Wethersfield residents, but if they're a Wethersfield chamber member, can they submit or is it just for residents? No, it's not just for residents. It's for we. Uh, many of the uh, submissions come from outside of town. We, the only um, limitation is it has to be a Weathersfield landmark, a Weathersfield location to be in the calendar. Um, but yes, we um, we welcome uh, folks from all over the place. We've had some out of state people in the past even submit uh, photos. So. Great. Any other questions on that? Peter, I know you have, I think, well, how many have we printed out in the past? Did we increase that or was it the same number the last couple of years and did we go through them all? It's been 4,000 uh, 4, um, for the last couple of years. Um, we dropped it by 500, I think last year uh, and we do still have some. So um, we're about to distribute um, well, we'll get to it on the agenda, but we do have some left. So, um, and we've had some left each year. So, um, I think this was the uh, even more difficult year with the COVID and everything like that to get them out, get them out there. But um, it, I think 3,500 is is still a good number. Okay. Great. Any other questions on the town guide and calendar? Okay. Item C. Uh, welcome wagon. What do we need to discuss there? So uh, we're we haven't we haven't done a um, a distribution uh, of the welcome wagon packets for quite a while. So I asked the chamber uh, to put the word out to their members. Uh, we're going to do the same thing uh, with the email distribution uh, we have. We've we've obviously over the last year we've had an influx of. 250 to 300 new apartments coming online. So our plan was to do a specific distribution to all those new residents to make them aware of business uh, resources and uh, you know put the town calendar in there just to reach out uh, to those residents who are new to town to make sure they're aware of all the things the town has to offer. We still have a supply of the bags uh, here. Uh, so we wanted to do another round of that and focus specifically on the, the new apartment uh, residents, make that connection. Okay. Also going to uh, an influx of new residents from out of state. Uh, houses have been selling like crazy here. So um, I would suggest that we include all the new um, new homes as well. I think we have to we have to refresh our relationship with uh, the with the with the realtors. Realtors per okay. personnel have changed, our contacts have changed a little bit, so we need to uh, also refresh that as well. Peter, how the ones going to the apartments? How will they be distributed? Do we know that yet? We're going to reach out to a contact uh, at each one of those complexes. We've already started to do that, and um, we'll figure out the logistics. Um, that way, but we're going to rely on them. We'll provide them with with the supply and they can distribute it internally to their residents. Good. Any other questions on Welcome Wagon? And Judy, I always give you a kudo on that. It was a very simple but very effective idea. So thank you. Um, Judy hates when people say nice things about her in person. <laughs> That one, I don't mind. Okay, that's a good one. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Um, Peter, business incentive programs, item D. So we've been kicking the can along a little bit on this one. We've talked about revising the tax incentive program. Uh, we obviously have the facade program and we have the, the, the CPACE uh, energy efficiency program that we offer. During this whole uh, pandemic, we received um, many inquiries from businesses asking if there are other resources that um, the town offers to the business community. And we, uh, obviously we do not have um, additional resources other than those that I've mentioned. Um, additionally, um, 
as part of the Borden project, uh, they received funding from the Capital Region Development Authority uh, to the tune of, I think it was $5 million. That money over a period of time is going to be uh, redirected back to Weathersfield to assist with further uh, economic development. So we're setting up a meeting with the Capital Region Development Authority to better understand um, how that's gonna work and what that funding uh, could be used for. So I think it's a good time to kind of assess the incentive programs that we offer and maybe have a conversation about what other programs we should be thinking about uh, offering uh, in the future um, to uh, further you know, be a tool in our toolbox to attract businesses and development to the community. So, so basically what I'm saying, we probably should just maybe step back, kind of assess what we offer, take a look at what we might be needing to offer in the future and see where that conversation uh, ends up going. Did we uh, uh, did we agree on the 23rd or the 30th? Oh, for that meeting, I think it would be the following. Yeah, so it's probably the 30th, Gary. With yeah, I'm CRDA. just waiting to hear back from. Yeah, I'm just waiting to hear back because we had moved the date back a week, and I wanted to make sure that worked for them. I am okay on the 23rd. I think I I did have a conflict, but that's not. I do not have one now, so that is an option. In the afternoon, right? Yep. You're available. Okay. Yep. So we'll have more information um, uh, after that meeting is held, but I wanted to put it on the agenda uh, for a future conversation. Um, we would probably also look to see what other towns are doing. Some communities offer micro loans to businesses. Um, uh, and also have programs, not just for the exterior of properties, but for the interior of properties. I don't know how far we would end up going with this, but it's probably going to be helpful for us to see what our uh, competing communities offer and uh, just kind of compare ourselves to them and whether we should be doing things or whether we can afford to do things. I mean, it's, it's obviously a monetary impact, uh, but it's probably worth going through that effort and uh, seeing how we stack up. A lot of those communities have access to funds that we don't, CDBG funds, home funds, other federal resources that they can leverage, or because of the makeup of their community, they can leverage CDF, HEDCO, other um, organizations that provide seed money. So it doesn't mean we can't, it just means we have to figure out how to repurpose and repackage what we have. Yeah, and, and uh, you're, I well, I, I agree with you 100%. You're spot on. And, and looking at it from almost backwards, looking at Metaplex, looking at other properties um, that we have and figuring out from, from that perspective, what how would we use money to work on those projects and kind of house, look at what our needs are, literally on structures and redevelopment areas and, and try to develop those programs and incentives around things that we know we, have, we definitely need. I know it's probably that that's that's just logic. Um, good. Well, it's nice that we're going to have that meeting. I mean, it's, it just looks like, a, as you say, Pete, a you know, from the RDA perspective, having access to uh, funding gives us a you know a tool in the box that we really need um, to help you know move along some projects, as you know, and to compete with other towns, as you mentioned. Okay, great. Um, Prior, before the time management report, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I know you're on the line. I don't know if you had anything you wanted to share in general, anything before we get into these other reports, but I figured I would give you the floor if you have anything you'd like to share. I got my book. Yes. Uh, I did see uh, on Facebook that the owners of uh, the Weathersfield Diner are planning to sell um, their their restaurant, which they've you know had for probably less five years and have done a great job of redeveloping it and, and making it such a, a wonderful place. So just keep that on everybody's radar screen um, that if they do sell, we're hopeful that uh, some new buyers would come in that would do um, just as good of a job and care so much about the community as the folks have over the, the last five or six years now. Um, I did uh, speak with some folks last night at the Main Street uh, Shopkeepers Association meeting 
and um, there's a, a number of new businesses. Uh, some are new and not so new, but have kind of repurposed uh, what they're doing, namely the Grange. Uh, they've gone from uh, catering to takeout, and I'm happy to report they're actually doing some catering for small events right now, uh, both indoor and outdoor events. Uh, but they're looking, uh, I'll actually say all of them, and, and all of these folks are looking for possible ribbon cutting ceremonies or, um, you know, uh, the town reaching out to them to, to show their support. Um, Dr. Joe Pascal, Pascali, Pascali possibly, uh, Village Cairo, he's the uh, incoming president of the Shopkeepers Association. He's right there in Buzz Willard's uh, garage or uh, barn back there on Main Street. Uh, I know Liberty Insurance is there, um, but Village Cairo uh, Chiropractic is there as well. Um, Natasha, who recently took over for um, the two owners over at um, Old Country Store, uh, she was not there, but she's looking to to see. You know, even though it's not a grand opening, it is under new ownership, so. Um, I haven't been in about a week or two, and I don't know if she's changed up uh, things in there, but she's looking to uh, to have the town reach out. Uh, Vinny uh, Federici, drum roll roasters, uh, right on the corner. If anybody gets a chance to get their coffee, I got to be honest with you, I got, and Judy, you'll like this, Broad Street Blend, um, you know, is, is their namesake, and uh, Main Street Coffee as well. Uh, so they do have a local flavor, uh, not only, you know, flavor, but uh, they, they are capitalizing on where they are here in, uh, in Weathersfield. Uh, and then finally, uh, Bryce Hardy from the Charles, uh, looking to see if uh, we could do a ribbon cutting for those folks. Um, we've done so much getting them to where they are right now. And, uh, and with the um, outdoor dining as well, they're very appreciative of all the work that not only Peter, but the entire town has done. Um, to get them up and running right now. So um, I can give this list to you, Peter, uh, of all the folks that were there last night that uh, are interested in having the town reach out to them. But um, I wanted to give uh, kudos to, uh, to the town, to the uh, uh, EDIC and the uh, RDA, working with a lot of these companies to uh, make sure that they can open up and hopefully sustain uh, their business model here in, uh, in town. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Manager? Sure. Let me just move some stuff around here. All right, a couple things going on. First and foremost, uh, if for you who didn't see, the governor decided to um, make some adjustments to the executive orders that are currently out. Uh, backing up a little bit, he extended his authority up through and including February um, for a number of these orders. The one that has uh, my office jumping through hoops right now is the change in terms of um, fines that can be levied for individuals who are breaking certain rules and regulations that are going on. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to affect that change to ensure that we're gaining compliance where we can and when we can. Um, at the same time, there seems to be some conflict in the approach in terms of um, sports, what sports can play and can't and when they can play. Um, and then in addition, some of the travel rules and regulations um, in terms of a management standpoint, that's incredibly difficult simply because we are a small staff here, which means if one leaves and one comes back and they potentially impact uh, another department, we look at potentially shutting down entire departments and that's a really difficult way to um, manage a, a business, uh, an organization in terms of providing services to residents. But we'll figure it out. Um, on a positive note, somewhat positive note, um, we've only seen an increase of maybe about 20 cases, 20 positive um, COVID cases in Weathersfield in the last 30 days. Uh, for the last three or four months, it's been pretty stagnant, which means that flattening the curve has had an impact not only in the state of Connecticut, but also in the town of Weathersfield. So kudos to the uh, residents, as well as the businesses that have been open since May um, that have helped maintain that number uh, by maintaining social distancing. We are up on testing. 
for almost 5,000 tests and about 299 positive case cases. Um, at this time, for you football fans out there, the town of Weathersfield High School won't be playing unless they determine that they're going to play at a separate in a separate facility. Uh, same with youth football. Um, we're trying to be consistent from high school down, although that may change depending upon what the state comes out with with, um, with any potential changes. So we're we're keeping it relatively fluid, but we're trying to be as stern as possible to maintain um, the requirements associated with social distancing and protecting town residents. Uh, there, in terms of operations, Parks and Recreation has started or will be starting in the next 30 to 45 days, some programming that may include individuals coming into the community center. But again, just going back to our previous conversation, that's gonna be limited to 25 people. Um, and the layout, the way it looks, just as an idea is the banquet hall, um, which can hold well over 300 people, having 25 people spaced out, probably up to 12 feet each, uh, depending upon what they're doing, but potentially exercise classes. Uh, for the most part, Parks and Rec shifted a lot of their programming to virtual over the last three to four months. And that seemed to work out uh, with some uh, registration still being relatively consistent. So good news, people are turning um, uh, on a dime, which isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. Uh, let's see, the Senior Center will remain closed. The library has begun to open with limited hours. They are 10 to 2, Monday through Saturday, and then they are open Monday and Tuesday evenings, 5 to 9. Um, there are no chairs. I walked through there yesterday. There is not a chair for you to sit in, so it's available for browsing only. You can go through and, um, and pick your books. There's also staff available for you to get books if they're in an area that happens to be because they've rearranged furniture to block things. Um, um, there is uh, assistance there both at the door, counting how many people come in and uh, as well as helping individuals throughout the building. And there's, there's plexiglass up everywhere. So we've created kind of a safety net for both residents as well as the employees. What else is on the list? Uh, just a couple, uh, some positive things going through the state. We were granted bond funds for uh, the Wolcott Hill Road median, um, which is one of the major gateways into town. If you recall, last year, the state awarded the town close to $3 million to do improvements on Wolcott Hill Road, heading from Victoria Lane southbound in uh, deeper into Weathersfield. Those uh, will be in process over the next 12 months. Um, and we've got an added half a million dollars to do some streetscape improvement um, on, that, on that median um, in the gateway. Um, on the, as part of that bond package, the town also received a million dollars to do renovations to Spring Street. And I apologize if I said this at the last meeting. I, honestly, our meetings are spread out, so I, I can't recall what I said at which meeting. Um, but that bonding is coming through to do improvements to Spring Street, uh, which includes the dam um, and some road improvements. We still haven't finalized exactly what those funds will be allowed to include, but it could include work going all the way from Route 3 into Old Weathersfield, uh, depending upon how the state approves the plan, <clears throat> the final plan. Fall paving program has begun. I'm just going to bring up my quick list. Um, I'll start with uh, those areas include Back Lane from Prospect to Whippoorwill, Goff Road from Prospect to Ciderbrook, and Coleman to uh, from the Silestine Highway up to Longview. Um, as part of road improvements, some of you may have heard, seen on Facebook, driven by the construction project at um, on church and not uh, being done by the MDC, replacing their main water line has begun. My understanding is they are done with evening work uh, as of last night. Um, they have through, uh, as a result of, um, uh, there was a there was a big push to keep uh, some of that road work and construction material and, um, and construction vehicles off of a certain property, but unfortunately the work still needs to get done and the vehicles and, and material need to be placed somewhere. So currently it's in the right of way. 
uh, which may sometimes include the street, may sometimes include the snow shelf. Uh, we are working with the contractor and MDC to try to encourage them to be considerate of the neighbors, um, but ultimately uh, the material has to go somewhere and we're doing our best to try to be, uh, to try to get the contractor to be neighborly, but, uh, but it is not easy. Um, that is expected to go through the spring, although again, the hope is that the evening road work is actually, their evening work is actually done. Uh, Anything else, Mr. Evans? Yeah, a couple quick things, if I can. Um, at the council meeting, uh, well, I'll do council meeting. At the last council meeting, council approved uh, drainage improvements at Knott and Heather, uh, which has had some issues for probably close to a decade in terms of water and flooding and uh, icing up and then um, thawing out, which causes damage not only to the neighboring properties, but also to the street. They approved the firehouse renovation of roof replacement in Old Weathersfield. We're going to do that um, to match the roof, the existing roof. And uh, the mayor did a ribbon cutting about two weeks ago, right before the start of school on the high crest portable renovations. Uh, for those of you who have been following along, that's the request has been a long time coming to improve both high crest portables as well as Charles Wright, we were able to do high crest internally, saving the taxpayers, I'm gonna wager probably close to $400,000. High three is low $400,000 uh, because we did it in house with our own um, team. So I think that's just kind of a good show of the talent that we have here and also how we're trying to be, uh, kind of protect the, the taxpayers revenue. And then the other thing is I wanna invite everyone to a social justice coalition. Uh, meeting, which is coming up. Uh, we'll send the date out to everyone if memory serves it's September 30th. I don't have it in front of me, um, but we're welcoming um, residents, business owners, property owners to come out and have a, an informed discussion and dialogue about the town of Weathersfield, talk about our diversity, um, our talents, and um, just in general uh, address, you know, any conversation, um, community conversation, related to race, equality, um, and associated programming. What is that date again, Gary? Okay, let me double check. I want to say it's September 30th, 30th, but if you give me two seconds, I'll tell you officially. Well, he's looking it, it's, it is a multi-meeting um, multi program, but the kickoff is September 30th. I'm going to double check it. I do have to run. I Believe it or not, I got to get now on a one o'clock call. Uh, for the uh, for the job that pays the mortgage here at the house. So um, let me jump off to that one o'clock call. Thanks for everybody being on. Gary, thanks for the update. Peter, thanks for the update. Uh, Mark, great job uh, uh, chairing this and uh, look forward to uh, any updates and developments as they come along. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. Take care. September 30th, the first introductory meeting is September 30th at 5.30. It will be virtual. I'll send the flyer around so people can click on the link if they're interested in registering or participating. Um, that first meeting, the first two meetings are information sessions. One's gonna be in the evening at 5.30. The next one is gonna be October 14th at 8.30 a.m. So we're trying to get people who work multi different shifts involved. And I'll cut it short there. Does that conclude? Mr. Manager? Yeah, that's probably enough for now. Okay. Just to um, uh, tag on your the funding for Spring Street, um, uh, many years ago, I, as you, you know, I grew up in town, and as a kid, we used to skate on that pond all the time. The town had a had a um, ploy out there, a skate guard, if you will, um, uh, and you would have 40, 50 people or more on there coming down with their skates and skating, the town used to cut back all the reeds in through there so when it froze over. So that could be, I, I mean, if you've got the money and there's opportunity to really look at that as a potential recreational spot as well during the winter, it brought a lot of people together. Uh, and it was a really neat little thing to be able to do um, in, in Old Weathersfield. Problem now is that we don't have heavy freezing in the wintertime. 
That pond has right. not been frozen for a while. Yeah. If, if anything, twenty if anything, twenty twenty has taught us um, anything could happen, yeah. including a blizzard yeah. that freezes that pond over. I would yeah. love that. I would love that. So and the town probably, also had a fire there all the time too. So like the kids outside. Warm them. They had a fire in a you know big can. Cool. Uh, that was in the pre-OSHA days, I think, um, to a degree. But um, it was it was great. I mean, it was a spot where there'd be pickup hockey games and people would go out and skate. And it was, if if working on the dam and and uh, to make that a, a recreational spot, you know, with Mother Nature participating in freezing the water, I just pose that, Mr. Manager, because at one point that was a go-to uh, in the winter uh, here in town. Um, so, yeah. uh, Thank, council, thanks to the state delegation on approving that, on approving that application, and Senator Funfara had a big, had a heavy hand in making it happen. So, um, um, it's um, yes, it's good to have friends in the right places. I agree. Um, do we have anybody here from town council for the liaison report? Um, I could, I could do some. If you could, sure. Um, well, I, so uh, the first is a uh, approved a resolution to, and I'm going to paraphrase, but essentially stand against racism and promote um, the uh, looking at programming from the top down, including the school system, um, to ensure that we're providing education uh, and training on um, equality, um, ensuring that racism any racism within town is removed um, and eradicated. Uh, that includes everything from programming and policies that we have within town hall in terms of hiring practice, practices, uh, as well as in the educational system to ensure that teachers are being held accountable and staff here are being held accountable to things that they do and say. Um, and some of that is frankly training and implicit bias or um, having courageous conversations, but also um, just trying to get people to understand that we are all here together. Um, we are one town, we are one nation, um, and we need to be tolerant and understanding of one another. Um, and so a resolution was put forward. Um, ultimately, the Social Justice Coalition, just as a tie-in, will help work to have those dialogues within the community to see what are those things that need to be addressed that are at the, the top level. It's following the results-based accountability approach, which is essentially starting with the end in mind, working backwards um, to what are those activities you need to do in order to address racism, inequality, or equality. Um, and, uh, and then a measuring or a metric to ensure that we're on track to achieving those goals. Um, and so the council will work um, within the social, within the information that comes from the Social Justice Coalition, to um, take that resolution that was put forward and actually address and move forward with some of those outcomes and recommendations. The uh, I mentioned Knott and Heather getting approved for their funding, the firehouse roof uh, being approved on this upcoming agenda. There is um, awarding the contract to. The hold on, just bring it up. Uh, work on another gateway, which was also state funding, about nine hundred thousand in state funding, to improve Highland Street to Thornbush. Um, that contract will be awarded on Monday, unless, of course, we don't get enough votes. But I'm pretty sure everyone will vote for it. Um, however, you never know what the council does. But with any luck, we're going to try to push that through this fall. Uh, last meeting, they did budget. Reconciliation. So, for those of you, last but at the this budget, during this budget, due to COVID, there was concerns about uh, revenue. As such, the seated council wanted to consider this a rainy day. So they used two million dollars from the rainy day fund to keep the tax rate as low as possible. Um, as such, um, they used two million dollars from the rainy day fund, which actually dropped the um, the mill rate just slightly, uh, which it, with the effort of trying to take some of the burden off the taxpayer who might be unemployed as well as all taxpayers. And during the budget transfer, they returned about $1.4 million back to the coffers um, of that 2 million. 
They approved high crest boiler room improvements as well as awarded contracts to repair the tennis courts, the basketball courts at Standish and Old Weathersfield and the basketball courts at Greenfield. And then the paving program was approved. That's basically where they sit. Great, thank you for that, Mr. Evans. Um, our, our good friend, Mr. Silver, is uh, I sorely missed. He was our PNZ liaison. Is there a uh, somebody from PNC that's going to be filling in for Dan? Uh, they haven't made those um, appoint appointments yet, but um, I'll bring it up at the next next meeting and see who uh, wants to wants to join us. Just uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the moratorium was extended. Uh, they approved um, a change of use for select physical therapy. They're going into the Mazzucato Plaza. At, um, if you're familiar with that site, it was where the uh, medical marijuana uh, facility was gonna go. So that space will be used for physical therapy. Um, and then there's some, an application uh, submitted by the uh, owners of the Mr. Sparkles car wash. They're gonna do some, do some work there. Uh, actually, they're talking to a, an oil change. So they might do some demolition of a part of that car wash. Have they approached us for uh, facade improvement? No, no. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Gillespie? That's it for planning and zoning. Um, Ms. Keene, Heritage Tourism. Okay. Um, we have a couple, we talked about a couple of things. Uh, and I'm going to let Peter talk about the Sustainable Connecticut Commission, a certification that he submitted. Um, so let me go ahead and t list the other things that we discussed at the meeting, Peter, and then go back to it. Sure. Um, there is a, a charging station that's being considered for at the Keeney Center for cars. Um, it would be, I believe, two bays or two sides, to, uh, two plugs, but um, people would pay for the charging while they're visiting Old Weathersfield for a restaurant or whatever. And I guess the charges don't take too long to do. So all those new electric cars. Um, and there is a... Um, in the electric cars, there's a recommended map that people can use to find uh, places that they can stop for lunch or dinner and charge their cars. So that would be a good way to bring more people into town um, who are traveling by or through and they might love our little town, decide to stay. Uh, so that's in the works. <clears throat> uh, the photo contest we talked about. The scarecrows are coming back um, October 2nd, I think, is when they start showing up, although they may be earlier. Um, I think that's a little bit later this year than other years. It's usually, um, well, no, maybe it's not. Okay, and uh, Jesse uh, Smith has done a historic walk video on the Historic Weathersfield website. It's beautiful, you should look at it. There's also, um, a program called Aerial America. There's a flyover and we are episode number four, flyover of Weathersfield, if you want to see that too. Oh. And we did talk about the parking situation in old Weathersfield and try to think of ideas. Uh, one of the issues that I have is that the uh, in the parking study, the firehouse was listed as 30 and there's only 13 in there. So we need to find some more parking spaces. Um, wherever. Yeah, Peter, work on that, will you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Peter, want to talk about that uh, Sustainable Connecticut certification? Sure, we had, uh, we had, I think we talked about this um, at a couple of previous meetings, just to keep you in the loop on that, but we did, um, we did file our sustainable uh, CT uh, community certification application. It was due at the end of August, so we did file that. Um, we filed for what they call the silver certification, which is the highest certification uh, that you can get. So we are uh, waiting uh, for feedback on that um, and should know uh, shortly. There's an award ceremony, I think, at the uh, CCM con convention, which I believe is going to be held vir uh, virtually this year. So we are uh, um, uh, waiting for that. Uh, and uh, a lot of thanks to all the various departments that uh, worked with, uh, with me to to pull that uh, together. So um, it's more of a, uh, it does open us up for some funding. 
as, as Judy mentioned, uh, there's some talk about a, an electric vehicle charging station. There's a matching grant program that we could apply uh, for and uh, raise the revenue uh, to get that installed. And then the, uh, the charges on the station would basically pay for the maintenance uh, of, of the charging stations. Anything else, Ms. King? Just that, uh, you know, fall is the best time in Weathersfield, so we want to promote whatever we can. Great. Thank you, Judy. Deb Raven? Okay. You can hear me, right? We um, can. I, thank you. So I have, um, I met with Carrie Wood yesterday on something, but she wanted me to bring to the EDIC that she's been hearing some I don't want to say complaints, uh, challenges from the Weathersfield, old Weathersfield uh, store saying that they were promised additional lighting in the lampposts. Um, and she wanted the EDIC to know that she is on the Commerce Committee and that she has funds for that. So I'm passing that on. I have not heard any comments on that when I've been. Gary, you want to jump in on that one? Which particular, on her particular lamppost? No, in, oh. in Old Weathersfield. In Old Weathersfield, do you know how they have those different lampposts? Right, the old, the, right. Yeah, this is a lighting so, project, Pete? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the short part of it is we're working on that. We do have some funds designated for it. Um, I have to get some approvals. We were working with... Um, Power Secure was a company that had provided us some quotes uh, for what the installation would be and what the options would be. They came to us with three potential, um, I'll call it replacement modules or uh, lights. Um, they didn't match exactly what we're looking for at this time. Um, so we're trying to work through that process of getting those up and, um, and getting council approval. Uh, to Carrie, should should I have Carrie reach out to you? Or are you already aware of the funds she's talking about? It, now Carrie was saying she had funds. The state had Carrie, funds. She, she's on the yeah. She's on the commerce committee. She said for the state, and she has funds for that. So um, she wanted me to let you know. Yeah, you can point her in my direction. I talked to her yesterday as well. Um, not about this, but um, yeah, you I'll can tell her to reach out to you. Me. I mean, I'm more than happy to use her money rather than mine. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or we could do a, or we could do a bigger project. You know, all the taxpayers here are put, you know, pitching in at the state and the local level. So let's mix it. And per executive, per executive order seven B, Mr. Evans, you are on record saying you'd rather use their money than our money. I believe I said it's all of our money. State money is our money as well as. But I, I'd actually say that to the governor. I'd rather use your money than the local taxpayer. I, I wholeheartedly concur. Ms. Raymond, um, anything else? Yeah, so I met with Kathy Bagley last week um, in regard to our two last fundraisers that probably will be, well, the bar beer and barbecue, we definitely cannot have because of the new executive order. So that will be on for next year. And now the newest thing is the holidays on Maine. Uh, which uh, we, she said we need to wait another month to see if we could be doing that. But mm -hmm. honestly, I don't, don't want to sound negative, but I do not see that happening. I can just picture, you know, even if we had it, I could just picture a big announcement going out that the chamber and the town sponsored this and nobody had masks. It's just, it would be too hard to, to control. I don't see that. Um, but we were thinking because the original plan on this was to expose the shopkeepers down in Old Weathersfield. That's why I originally started. And um, I was thinking about last night putting together, I'm gonna reach out to the shopkeepers. Remember the old um, books that you could buy and people would buy them for holiday gifts. And it might be like the Charles saying, you know, come in to my restaurant and I'll give you a free entree for dinner, whatever. I forget what they called that book, but putting that together so that the shopkeepers still get exposure 
and um, selling them. So I'm going to work like on that. Like a passport? Like a passport? Yeah, it was called a, a it was like a. My entertainment book. I think they were entertainment books. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thought I was the only one that was old enough to remember that here. Yeah. Um, you were 16 what, inches, what do you, what do you, you say? About 16 inches thick. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? It's a cool idea. Okay. I just, last night when I couldn't sleep, that's what I was thinking about doing. So I'm going to work on that. Um, and we're really kind of working on, you know, getting things together for next year. Again, I said I'm working on just retention. I, uh, in conjunction with that webinar that you were talking about, Mark, um, with the town, I think that what I've been hearing from certain businesses is, you know, once the cold weather starts, what does business look like then for them? And it might be a good subject for that. Um, I know that Drumroll Coffee Roasters is looking for a ribbon cutting. So I've reached out to that. I don't know if we've gotten anywhere on that issue. Do we know that? No? Yeah, I haven't talked to them, but they haven't asked me about that. Yeah, I, I sent it to, Denise is on. I sent it to Denise. Well, anyways, I'll, I'll follow up with her offline. Um, two questions that I have. One is simple. I got a call from a disabled veteran who moved into town who can't afford internet. And is there some sort of directory of businesses with phone numbers and stuff that I could pick up and deliver to him? Do I know that the town hall may have? I'm sorry, could you say that again? Sure. So I got a call today from a disabled veteran who okay. just moved into town and he cannot afford internet. So he's looking to see if we have like a yellow page booklet or something that for all the businesses in town, do we have that? The uh, most up-to-date thing is the, um, the reopened Weathersfield, the little newspaper that we did a couple months back yes. that has uh, all of the businesses that were open at that particular time. We're about ready to um, update that again in October, oh. um, but that's probably the most recent. It has phone numbers, emails, all that kind of stuff. Does the town still have some of those? Peter, I can pick yeah, up. Yeah, I do. I do have a stack here, and there's a stack down at the front desk. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Um, the other question that I'm getting from the, um, I don't know if we have the answer for this. Maybe Gary does, but um, they're looking to see if the federal government is going to do more PPP money. Do we know that? Hey, that might uh, be another thing on our web and on our on our Zoom call. Yeah, unfortunately, I know no more than anyone else out there. Uh, Congress was kind of going back and forth. Um, the president had made some decisions. Um, and then I think we're kind of just waiting. Um, same thing at the state level. The state basically is not in a position at this point to give it out. And they're also waiting to see what the federal government does. Um, uh, you know, obviously, the town has some concerns as to especially for businesses, what's going to happen in the next few months as things get colder. And just as I'm out there talking to businesses too, or restaurants too, it's like, well, governor says I can't have a tent with four sides on it because it's considered indoor. So can I get away with three and heat it? And how long can I heat it for? And then once the snow falls, how do you do that? And so in terms of revenue, obviously the town's always concerned as to um, supporting the local economy, not just for the benefit of the residents, but for the benefit of of revenue and being able to provide services. So um, I think that is probably a good topic for the EDIC and RDA, but I don't know a creative way to extend that year. And uh, I'd, I'd love some guidance from the state government on that, um, even if we have to be unique here and stretch, stretch it a little bit. Um, as far as PPP, I keep waiting. Might be something that when we do that meeting, we could we could address that. That's what I've been asked, anyways. Um, yeah, can I ask you a question about holidays on Maine? Um, and, and maybe Gary and Peter can jump in on this too. What what if you were to do like a holiday stroll, um, almost like the scarecrows, where people could just go from place to place, point A to point B, and the shopkeepers were to have you know, like hot chocolate or whatever, because some of them have done that in the past. And yeah. 
you wouldn't get as many people as you do for holidays on Maine, but uh, maybe Santa Claus could wander around to close off the street if possible and uh, um, like you did in the past and let people stroll from shop to shop. Um, I, yeah, I, I had suggested that we talked about something like that. Um, like even maybe just doing the tree lighting, you know, maybe having Santa come and then have, you know, leaving it up to the shopkeepers, as you said, to entice people to come visit them. Cause that really what it was all about. Kathy was concerned about how many people would come because she thought more than a hundred people would come to something like that. So I, my understanding is that, um, well, we have at any wait. time, at any time during scarecrows, when they're on a beautiful sun, a sunny afternoon, there's more than a hundred people on main street. <laughs> you know? uh, but she said that, uh, there was no designated times for that, that people could come whenever they wanted oh, to. Right. Or okay. we would be having designated times. Well, maybe don't have designated times. Have people come during the day or in the evening? You know, I'm, I'm just suggesting that yeah. maybe there's a way to salvage some of it. Love it. Yeah. I, yeah. So I thought she asked me to wait until the end of this month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's what we're. Yeah. And to capitalize what Judy is saying, I mean, the tree lighting, you're asking for, I guess, some trouble with respect to getting people together. But if the shopkeepers in that area are able to all get together and say, look, on Saturday and Sunday, between November, December, and January, between 12 and 4, there's going to be a little something everywhere at those events. That's something that they could each coordinate. And frankly, I, they might get more foot traffic on something like that than the people that are there during holidays on Maine, which kind of just walk right by them um, and, you know, go off and just kind of socialize in other spots. But I think it's a great idea. If you guys have talked about it, um, the, I think it's a wonderful, just like, as Judy says, Scarecrows on Maine, there's a lot of people strolling around there uh, and, and the shopkeepers could do the same thing and they could extend it. Instead of one weekend, they could go the entire month of November, or the entire month of December, they could do something. So could you that's a, a door decorating contest to encourage people walking around further outside than just the main street business area? I mean, still attracting people to the area, but keeping them around a little longer? So I would, you know, I've been focused more on the, on the chamber members, but uh, maybe I could work with the shopkeepers association with that to include everybody. Who, who would that person be that I was in charge the of that? Shopkeepers were the ones that did the door decorating contest. No. And uh, Peter, I don't think we had an answer whether or not they were going to do it again this year. No, um, they've had some change in the shopkeepers in terms of <clears throat> leadership. So I'm not sure who the right person would be at this point. This felt like it kind of was along the same lines as the scarecrows. Yeah, Got people right. out and about. And... Right. Right. Yeah. So there's no, mm, there's no leadership there, though. I guess you're saying so. Uh, well, I think the, I think what was said earlier, Doc, uh, the um, chiropractor, oh, okay. village chiropractor, is the incoming president. So maybe he's the oh. person. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you. Yep. You know, they used to do the porch. Um, it was a, a summertime thing with music on porches and porch fest. Porch fest. Porch mm. fest. Yeah, it could be yeah. along that line. You know. Yep. Yep. Um, where and people be encouraged to keep moving. You know. Um, yeah, not set a specific to... time, like you said. I I like that idea, and I'll work with him on that. Thank you. That's that's very helpful for me. Uh, that's what I have. Deb, thank you. Um, with regards to that, I just wanted to add one thing that kind of dovetails again. I think I've used that word three times now, but um, the the parking issue until until it's addressed, and maybe even when it's addressed, um, people walking and parking at First Church or behind Keeney during snow, um, ice, uh, rain when it's cold, even if there's parking nearby, is going to it's going to prove you know difficult. Um, for that area because it just because of the nature of old Wethersfield. I don't know if the, if, if the chamber wants to think about it or the town can think about it, but some type of a transportation service down in old Wethersfield that just did a loop 
and maybe it was during you know high period times maybe the you know we've got Lenoche, we have Comstock we have the Charles we have Lucky Lou's we have the Creamery um, and just to get somebody out there um, to shuffle people around from a parking perspective to those places I think is a great way to help support that community in Old Wethersfield um, and I don't, I don't know it's just a rough idea I, I understand that but I don't know if there's a way that we can figure out some type of way to if they combine with the town and, and or, you know, uh, in private, um, some way to a golf cart or I don't know, um, but just something. But the Charles is going to have a hard time. Lenoche's is going to have a hard time. Um, all those restaurants suffer when the weather is inclement. Um, and uh, I just point that out. I don't have a solution. I just looking if you guys think it's an idea that we could maybe find funding for or talk to the business owners and maybe the shopkeepers would be the ones to talk to. Um, but just my humble two cents. Hey, Mark, at New Year's, uh, Hartford had that thing to bring people to town and we had the trolley going from Weathersfield into Hartford doing the round loop and, you know, bringing people all over. When the funding stopped in the various places, you know, Jay's restaurant picked it up because it helped him and took care of it. Maybe that's something that they could, the chamber can work on with those businesses where the businesses chip in for a trolley just to go around Weathersfield during, you know, certain time of the year to, you know, bring them from place to place. Just a thought. Yeah. It's more than one weekend. If you do it yeah, over yeah. the month of December, having that every Saturday or every Sunday, whatever day they choose, would actually encourage people to come down, even if it wasn't inclement weather, you know, right. to know that they can get a ride back to their car if they're at the other end of the street. Or on the other side of town. The what? But it, or if they were on the other side of town even. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, the other, the other towns like Glastonbury and West Hartford, a lot of the restaurants have incorporated uh, valet parking with their businesses now. Um, so it's on that same line. Yep. But, yeah, I think, um, yeah. Um, um, it, it, again, it's a very rough idea, but I, it's just something that I think if, if the owners were approached, there might be a way, you mean that enterprising, I mean, basically a local Uber, somebody with a local car could even participate and do it on their own. Um, you know, I, I doubt that you, you would need 20 people at a time people taking around, but it's just a small loop and picking people up and, and bringing them back. Again, just a rough idea. Um, Subcommittee reports, Pete, we talked about maybe doing a marketing meeting. Um, um, did we want to get, do we still, do we agree to do that based on the, um, uh, the business, I mean, the um, business outreach piece or are we, I know we, at one point we mentioned we should do a meeting. I can't remember what it was for, to be honest with you. I think there were two, I think there were two meetings. One was for the shop's local business outreach and the other was for the uh, the economic uh, incentives. That would be a later, latter, but maybe next week for the outreach. Okay. Um, my, um, I'll get back to you on that for uh, on a date. That will work. My schedule's a little dicey the next few weeks, but um, uh, that is something we should do. The other, the business incentive, that's really a finance committee um, um, committee, and we haven't had that, we haven't convened that in, a, in probably a couple of years, I think. So maybe uh, after so our CRDA meeting, we can do that. Yeah, that's a good idea because it'd be an idea to know um, how that would be affected by that. Um, anybody, if everybody has printed out a copy of the minutes, please take a moment on the minutes and let us know of any corrections or any comments. Any questions or comments on the our last meeting of August 13th, the minutes? Do a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Great. Thank you. Okay, our next meeting is Thursday, October 8th. Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> we didn't vote on the minutes, so I need to abstain from that because I wasn't here. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor say aye on the minutes. I'm sorry. Aye. Hi. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carson. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, October 8th, uh, 2020. Pete, we were going to uh, maybe um, send out 
um, a piece on the um, uh, uh, business outreach for us to take a look at just yes. between now and then? Yep. Um, Mark, only one other thing I just wanted to bring up. Sure. Uh, uh, Gary and I were approached by um, NBC Connecticut uh, TV. They are uh, reaching out to communities to, um, I wouldn't say offer, but to uh, produce like a 30 minute, a 30 second promotional commercial. Obviously the intent is for them to sell us uh, commercial space on uh, what, whatever segment uh, we might demographically see is beneficial to the community, but they've reached out to us um, with that idea. They're, they're doing it with a number of communities with the idea of using it to promote the community uh, to residents, visitors, you know, to support the business community, uh, as well as maybe attract uh, new residents to the community. So we're kind of in the early conversation about that. It is not by any stretch uh, cheap um, to do that. You know, the, it starts at 5,000 and goes up from there pretty much is the, is the budgetary uh, impact. Um, Gary and I haven't had a chance to sit down and, and kind of discuss that, but uh, I did have a phone conversation to get a little bit better handle on what would be involved in doing that. But I wanted to put that up. We, this is not something we've done before. The Tourism Commission has done uh, radio spots at different points in time, but um, uh, it's, uh, my understanding is we've never really done uh, TV uh, advertisement uh, in the past. So I wanted to throw that out there and just kind of see what the general reaction is as to whether we should uh, further pursue this conversation uh, or uh, or leave it leave it at that. And just if I can tag on to that, we were also approached, I, we never came to the EDIC with this, but we we're also approached by a company that was interested in doing a kind of a video spot for us as a marketing tool. Um, but frankly, this is back in March, actually February, but COVID hit, and since it was based off of support from local businesses, we opted not to. So this is this is a secondary option, um, and frankly, might even give us better, might even give us something we can hold on to to put on a website and use for other marketing. So it's it is an interesting yes. thought, I guess. I was going to ask. I'll go that. back can to what is it that we, we market? It? Is that question? Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Do we own the film after they if we paid for it? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I think the only downside to it is that, you know, from a recreational perspective um, in restaurant, we're, we're still limited by COVID. So I don't know from a timing perspective, maybe it's, you know, good time to do it now while and we can use it once things are more relaxed. Um, any type of marketing or advertising, I'm 100% for as long as it's, um, you know, it's, it, it makes sense. So they would produce the piece and then we would use that piece to advertise um, on yeah. Channel 30, the town yeah, of Weathersfield? It, it would be designed as a, as a 30, 30 second ad. They, I can actually send out, they did one for, I think, Wyndham. Um, so they're just rolling this out now, but it's obviously only 30 seconds. So there's only so much you can put in a 30 second piece. But um, so we would have some, obviously some direct say in what we would be promoting and what message we want to put out there. Um, and then, um, we would buy advertising time from them and put it put it put it out there at, at times when we think the demographic fits what we're trying to, you know, attract to the community. Do we have advertising rates? Was that a part of their package, Pete? They gave me a ballpark uh, figure. That's where I indicated the you know the five thousand dollars. It depends on you know the time slots and. Right. you know, what, what show is on and the rates are according to that. So, um, so it's hard to, hard to predict that, but they suggest, you know, a multi-week promotional thing. Um, and it really depends on what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Um, I, I, I agree. I mean, if it's, if it's prime time, you're going to pay more than, than off time. Um, do we have to, can we pay them to produce the video, but still use the video, say, on the Great Elm and on the town's website or, you know, or they is it they implied? They produce the video as part of your advertising package. I see. So they'll do that up front, but you end up, you have to 
commit to some amount of time. So it's not that they'll do the promotion, the production, and then you know buy the ad. So it's a it's a package, package deal. It's part of the, the cost of the advertising. Okay. I saw that Wyndham advertising that you refer to, Peter. It, it was well done. Yes. Oh no. It's it's. It's, it could be a very, very, very nice piece. And um, with all the things going on in town with the Borden and the new rest, I mean, we've got a, a great, you got the river restaurant. I mean, there's a lot of great things that you could pack into that and um, really open some eyes about what Weathersfield has to offer. So maybe we can further discuss it uh, at, the, at the marketing meeting. Yeah, it's all about the, I mean, there, I think everybody would agree it's a great idea. It's do we have the budget for it? And, you know, if you're going to advertise, you can't do once a month. I mean, you've got to be pretty steady with it if you really want to see it work. You can't just, you have to commit. Um, right. So to see what that commitment looks like financially, I think is probably something that we can do. They they have to, they, they have to have given you a ballpark or I assume on on ad rates or whatnot. And if not, that's something we can ask them for. Yeah, I can, I can, uh, I can get those numbers. They've given me a hypothetical, and they're they're big numbers. So um, it depends on you know. There's going to be some sticker shock. We would also have to probably work with the tourism commission to tap into their marketing budget as well, um, in order to you know it would be a mutual thing. Okay, well, to me, it's all about the economics. So I mean, I think we should discuss it at the marketing meeting. I think that's a great idea. Uh, okay. But you know, do we have the budget for it? I think is the biggest, biggest item. But we can also ask, uh, like the Borden, they might like to contribute to that, or any of the restaurants might like to contribute to the cost. Right. Okay. Well, that would be a good topic at the marketing meeting. I will send you an email, Peter, after this on dates that I've got available next week. Okay. I know I'm available Wednesday afternoon. Yep. Um, I know we're. So I know we were talking maybe with the CRDA, whatever the acronym was. Yep. If, if, um, so if, you want to, if we're going to do that, we can piggyback on that. Um, and if not, I am available Wednesday afternoon next week after I think one or two o'clock. Okay. I did have a week up. Okay. Um, any correspondence? Sorry, no. Denise is probably laughing at that. I know, it's, I know she's on here, Denise. No correspondence. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I want to make sure that was just checking to see if you were there. Um, all right, guys, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I'll second. All those in favor, turn your computer Aye. off. Aye. 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 All right, guys, peace and love. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Okay.